So here I am, a quarter century later, trying to build the same case with the same people in the same location. <laughs> you, would, you would think I had to give it up by now. But, um, <laughs> what is this? We're ready, I'm ready. Um, so it's all about reasoning. Um, and if we really want them to reason, then why are we spending so much of our educational energies teaching them not to reason in favor of memorizing computational procedures they don't understand. And we all know they don't understand. They can't put it to work. We've got decades of evidence that what we've been doing hasn't been working for kids. We're a nation of mathematically illiterate people. Um, the legislature's certainly been making things worse, not better, um, and crushing kids and teachers in the process. Most of our kids leave us not wanting anything to do with math. But there's an alternative that asks kids to reason from the very beginning and always in their own ways, and that's number talks. And I want to give you just a glimpse into what my fifth graders did after having about two months worth of daily number talks. But I first want you to think about this. With no paper and pencil, let me know with your thumb when you've had to come up with an answer. slide from Phil Darrow, but he talks about the arithmetic properties, and I want you to think about the student work and where they're putting those properties to work. Um, so here's a, here's a child who says, well, 20 times 48 is 960, but 7 times 48 is messy. I'll do 7 times 50, and that's 350. Whoops, there we go. Or a student who says, well, 50 times 27 is half of 2700, or 1350, so I'll take away two of those 27, 27s for 1296. Now, how come this one took so long and the other one didn't? Okay. <laughs> $12, and I need um, two more 48s, so that's going to be $12.96. Or the kids who say, can I make this problem easier? And in this case, they half one and they double the other and say, well, 50 times 24 is 1,200, and 4 times 24 is 96, so that's going to be $12.96. Or, oh, come on, this is, okay. Or, um, a lot of my kids got, came to look at a problem like this and say, well, that's a quarter of 4,800. That's easy. It's just 1,200. But I need two more 48s or 96, so that's 1,296. So to borrow another slide from Phil Darrow, he says you really can't do mental arithmetic um, without doing algebra. This is algebraic reasoning in its purest form. Um, I can't even remember what's coming here, and I've lost all of my notes. So. Oh, this is a slow slide. This is really good. Um, oh, that makes a lot of sense. We did a good job on this one. Just guess. Just guess. Oh, sure, now you're going to work. <laughs> so when we take a look at what do we gain by switching to number talks, we gain a lot. Kids really do come to believe that they're mathematical sense makers. They learn to make arguments and, and um, judge the arguments that others around them make. They develop productive habits of mind. Um, and I'm not really 
not asking us to give up a whole lot in the process. I'm asking us to give up those practices that have done a lot of damage to a lot of kids over the years. Practices that have driven most of them away from the study of mathematics. Practices that um, are leaving us mathemati mathematically illiterate, unable to solve the problems that we face in the world. fundamental thing I want my kids to leave my class understanding and that is that no matter what the problem is we don't see it the same way but if we really try to understand our different ways of seeing and look for the relationships between those we're all going to see more clearly and trust me it's a much healthier recipe for healthy kids and a healthier recipe for a healthy nation Thanks. <laughs>